On the news this week, Pierre Gasly is looking at all of his future options, while Toyota dominated Le Mans. You can now watch full 24-minute episodes of The Inside Line at our official home on unbeaten.com. Pierre Gasly says he's considering all options for a drive after 2023, with the Frenchman surprisingly pragmatic on Red Bull's recent re-signing of Sergio Perez to its top team. Gasly was dropped from Red Bull Racing after just 12 races into his first campaign with the squad in 2019, but has shone since returning to sister outfit Alpha Tauri with a win at Monza and consistent points. The Frenchman said Perez's extension was logical, with the Mexican on form, but that the knock-on effect was clear. The impact it has on my career, and with the ambitions that I have, is obviously affected. So that's what we're discussing at the moment with Helmut, to obviously find what's best for all of us, and how do we go forward from there, he said. Over in France at the Circuit de la Sarthe, Toyota has again dominated Le Mans, with Sebastian Buemi, Brendan Hartley, and Ryo Hirakawa on top for the brand's fifth straight win. It was a 1-2 for the Japanese team, with the number eight GR10 more than two minutes ahead of the sister Toyota, driven by Jose Maria Lopez, Mike Conway, and Kamui Kobayashi. Toyota's closest rival was the Glickenhaus 007 LMH of Ryan Briscoe, Richard Westbrook, and Frank Maillieu, which finished five laps down. Daniel Ricciardo was happy to have a clean weekend in Baku, with the Australian eighth for his first point since his home race, and finished ahead of his teammate Lando Norris for the first time since Bahrain. Ricardo has been under fire for the past few races, unable to challenge Norris, and has just 15 points to the Brits' 50. But things are settling down with a firm contract in place and commitment to improving. The 32-year-old said team orders went both ways during the Azerbaijan race, the second one to his benefit, which frustrated Norris. Meanwhile, in Perth, Australian football venue Optus Stadium turned papaya last weekend in support of hometown hero Ricardo. 1996 F1 world champion Damon Hill has opened up on embattled racer Daniel Ricardo's struggles, stating that his teammate Lando Norris has effectively ended him. Hill, in a chat with the sports official podcast F1 Nation, recalled a time when the Australian, just after he had signed with McLaren in 2020, told Norris his intentions in front of the media. Lando was already signed at McLaren, then Dan Ricciardo was signed, and he came up to us in the paddock, and he said, I'm going to end you. And I remember thinking, that is always a risky thing to say, <laughs> because it looks like the other way around, that, that Dan Ricciardo has been ended um, by Lando, uh, he can't crack it. It's understood that Ricardo's central issue is all about corner entry and his inability with the McLaren to take the same speed into it that he used to, with a weaker front end only made worse by 18-inch tyres. And Hill, now a pundit for Sky Sports in the UK, says that once the disappointing results start to stack up, it becomes a vicious cycle. Then the motivation goes and then the questions come and then the pressure goes back on to the person who signed him in the first place. And if there's lots of resources going out to pay for a very expensive driver, then inevitably, so he's under enormous amount of strain. Seven-time F1 world champion Sir Lewis Hamilton has been made an honorary Brazilian citizen with the nation's lower house of parliament passing the bill last week. Hamilton has long been a fan of Brazil, given he idolizes the late great three-time F1 world champion Ayrton Senna. I love Brazil. I've always grown up, I was when I was playing FIFA, for example, I was always playing Brazil as Brazil. <laughs> And um, so, you know, and for example, when I was racing, I was always, always watching Ayrton. 
The move was first proposed after last year's race at the Interlagos circuit, where Hamilton won the race for the third time and unfurled the Brazilian flag on the podium to the delight of the local fans. Arguments over F1's 140 million US dollar cost cap continue to rumble on, with the sport's top squad's adamant inflation and skyrocketing freight costs make it unsustainable. But while Ferrari's Mattia Bonotto has said that there's no straightforward solution, talk of introducing a driver salary cap as part of the restrictions has met widespread resistance with drivers' salaries one of a number of high-profile exemptions from the cost cap, and many keen to keep it that way. With two-time F1 world champion Alpine's Fernando Alonso stating it is an unfair move, with drivers doing more promotional work. They are asking more and more from us, and they are benefiting from that, so we should be outside from that cap. It's very complicated, he said. Red Bull racing strategist Hannah Schmitz has reflected on the squad's win at Monaco, with the gamble on an early pit stop for Sergio Perez, in which he switched to intermediates, paying off. Ferrari's Charles Leclerc led the field from pole position, but the Scuderia waited two laps too long, running the extreme wets on a drying track, as Red Bull rolled the dice on lap 17. It wasn't that clear how much ahead of the Ferraris we would come out of the pits, so you make that split-second decision, but then you've got maybe 20 seconds, which sounds like hardly any time to us right now, but in a race sitting there waiting to see if your decision's paid off, that can feel like a lifetime. Schmitz also revealed the depth of the squad's preparations for a race weekend, with simulations playing a massive part. Calculations and simulations, there's literally billions because before we've even got there, we've had to kind of simulate lots of different scenarios, lots of different tyre behaviours, lots of different paces, and then throughout the weekend we're just um, like refining our models and getting closer and closer to what will actually happen in the race. Williams has been fined 25,000 US dollars by F1 governing body, the FIA after it breached the sport's financial regulations by failing to submit its full-year reporting documentation by the March 31st deadline. The team voluntarily notified the FIA that it would miss the deadline, with the breach confirmed by the governing body in April. Williams was ordered to submit the required documentation by May 31st, pay the fine and associated costs, which it has since done. The FIA can impose much heavier fines and sanctions for other financial regulation breaches, including exclusion from the championship for an overspend in excess of 5%. Chinese driver Zhou Guanyu says he's not too worried about the future, despite the rookie being on just a one-year contract at Alfa Romeo and top young talent waiting in the wings to replace him. Guan Yu joined Alfa Romeo from Renault turned Alpi, where he was a reserve driver with plenty of testing kilometers under his belt, and came into 2022 with a bang, care of a point on debut in Bahrain. But the 23-year-old hasn't scored since, with his rated teammate Valtteri Bottas on 40 post-Azerbaijan, delivering at seven of the eight races held. And while there's still time yet to earn points, Guan Yu knows he's got to deliver with the squad's darling F2 young gun Teo Porsche on the hunt for a 2023 drive. I think right now I'll just try to focus on getting myself up to speed and bring the team double points finishes, he said. Alfa Romeo turned green in Baku, with the brand celebrating the sales launch of its new electric SUV, the Tonale. The plug-in hybrid combines a 15.5 kilowatt hour lithium ion battery, 90 kilowatt electric motor, and 1.3 liter turbo four cylinder internal combustion engine to deliver 272 horsepower and electric range of over 48 kilometers. The new livery on the C42s was a nod to the special Montreal green hue from Tonale's launch and a link to Alfa Romeo's identity for the transition to more sustainable motoring. 
Legendary British F1 engineer Frank Durney has reflected on his earliest days with Williams in the late 1970s, stating eponymous boss Sir Frank only spent money on making the car go quicker. Durney first joined Williams in 1978 from Hesketh and explained to F1's official podcast Beyond the Grid that the team's single-minded focus on performance was the right one. With five of the last seven races won in 1979, and its first title double secured in 1980. So there we were, spending absolutely nothing on a motorhome, absolutely nothing on a truck, but we had the fastest car. And we were quicker by a lot, and yet other people had got fancy trucks with the parquet floor and all the rest of the stuff, and we were beating them. And it was a lesson for me then. Thanks for watching. To stay up to speed on all things Formula One, make sure you hit the subscribe button.